All right. Um, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. My name is Kyle King. I am the Managing Director of Capacity Building International. Thanks again for joining us on a webinar. Again, and we going into 2023. Um, what we're going to do first to get started, if you can, just let us know where you're joining us from in the chat. It's always nice to see where everybody is coming from throughout the world. And today's webinar is brought to you in partnership with the International Emergency Management Society. And I'm joined here by Harold Drager. And we'll go through weapons detection, smart cities, and the impetus project tools. A very unique and special presentation today. So I'm glad you joined us live. If you have, and if not, this will be recorded and we will post that for dissemination later. So first, just to get started, a quick round of introductions. First again, my name is Kyle King. I'm the Managing Director of, of Capacity Build International and joined by Harold. Harold, good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. I know you can only join us for a few minutes, so we'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Kyle. I'm very excited that we have Joe on board. I've worked with Joe now in the Impetus Project for two, two and a half years, and he has exciting things to tell. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't join the whole presentation because I'm in Athens in another project about cultural heritage. So I have to go to a meeting tonight because the timing here, we are one hour ahead of of um, uh, Central Europe. So I was wrong on timing, but good luck. You will like, be excited with this presentation. Thank you. Hey, thank Thanks, you. Thanks for stopping by. And then before we get to our presentation, just a couple of administrative remarks, and then we'll turn over to Joe, who's joining us today uh, to go more into the topic. So quick recap on what we've done so far. So we're going into our third year of collaboration on the webinars with teams and Capacity Build International. Uh, we first started out with international models and emergency management going through a number of different countries. I think we got around 24 to 26 different countries that we explored the way that they handle disasters and emergencies with their national frameworks and systems. And in 2023, we're going to take a different, slightly, well, slightly different perspective, which means we're going to be more thematically focused on different functional areas, just like you've seen today with Joe and his great work over on uh, the tools and weapon detection systems and artificial intelligence and everything else that he's been working on, which I don't know everything about. So I'm going to be watching this just like you. Now, Smart Cities and the Impetus Project is one of the first ways that we're kicking it off for 2023, but you expect to see that we'll take some additional um, webinars coming up, we'll schedule some more in terms of working with our various other partners from Teams, including Fire Res Project, FireLog Project, many other EGU projects that Teams has been partnered on and working with, and we're going to bring those sort of thematic webinars into 2023 so you can see what types of projects that other nations and organizations are working on. We are, of course, open to recommendations, so if there's anything you'd like for us to discuss or you want to be able to show something during one of our webinars, certainly just reach out to me and let me know. It's as easy as just sort of responding to those Zoom emails, and then I'll be able to, to get that and, and write back to you. So a few quick points. Um, if you are going to be speaking or not, mute, unmute is always important. Let us know again in the chat where you're joining us from. And this is going to be recorded. So we will re record this and post it later on. Give us about a week after the event, and we'll post that as after it goes through our post-production and editing. And if you do have any questions uh, for the speaker today, please use the Q&A function. That way we can keep a list of questions and they don't get caught if, uh, or get lost in the chat, I should say. And then we'd be able to um, answer those questions as they come up. We will probably save them towards the end, Joe, I guess, unless you are open to taking questions during your presentation. I'll leave that up to you, um, but we'll see as they come up. Um, but generally, that's that's at your discretion. I, I, I like people to participate. We're going to get into the, the heat of the subject in a few moments and uh, sometime because the demo is very consistent. A shooting is very short. So the demo is going to be real time and short. So people can ask questions and then we can do more demos. So we're all here perfect. for you. Guys. That's perfect. And actually, if you if you join us live today, it's going to be super, super special, I think. Okay, so, well, Joe, we'll just segue right over to you. So thanks for joining us today. We're joined by Joe Levy, the founder and CEO of AI Alert and firearms detection tools and using AI. So Joe, thanks for joining us. Hey, uh, thanks a lot, Kyla. It's a pleasure being here. I'm right now, I'm live from Paris where, believe it or not, we have now a distribution, exclusive distribution uh, for French, for France with Corail Systems. Uh, and this is mainly due of the impact of 
I love it. Impetus, you know, Impetus is a project that we started to work on. It's a consortium. And through this consortium, we've been able to have friends like uh, Harald and then uh, learned a lot from our project coordinator, uh, Mr. Joe Gorman and Mathieu Brola, who's the scientist on this. And he started as an idea, you know, a few years ago. Uh, we want to detect knives and then guns. And um, what happened was we had a very, how oh, can I say that? I, I made the first, uh, the first MVP. Uh, I'm a guy who's Oscar nominated. Uh, I know a lot about image processing, special effects. I'm Swiss. I grew up in the Bahamas in the 80s. Uh, no, my dad was not a drug dealer. He was a banker, Swiss banker. <laughs> and then I went on to study at New York Film Academy. Brooklyn College, UCLA, and from there went on into deep image processing, uh, did a lot of reality TV as a uh, camera guy, post-production uh, person, then I went on to do all the corporate videos for Buell Motorcycles, for Eric Buell and for Holly Davidson, and from there I fell into the hole of VR. Uh, we did the first virtual reality exercise for the Swiss military. So as you can see, like Swiss people are by nature very precise. You know, take a Rolex watch; it has the stamp of the Geneva uh, uh, Association de Chronomètre, or whatever it is of Geneva. So the mindset that we have in our company were extremely precise. Um, after that, I went on to work for Apple for ten years as a certified trainer. So we became even more precise. You know, you have the Swissness, and then you have the Appleness uh, to it. So I'm very focused and. Um, as we did VR, IBM R&D told us, you know, there's a whole world out there of CCTV and governments dislike very much to work with Amazon or Google because they're afraid that their data might be uh, translated into uh, very powerful marketing and sales tools. So I thought, yeah, why not? You know, jumping from a half a million dollar camera to a camera, CCTV surveillance camera that's worth like maybe a few hundred bucks, that can't, can't be that hard. So today we have weapon detection. Uh, can I have a gun, please, uh, Christophe? Oh, super. So we're going to be doing later on the demo. This is a Glock small magazine fed handgun. This is a training gun. This is not a real gun, uh, but it has the same density as a real, uh, as a real gun. And uh, the beauty of what we've done in Padova and in Oslo was to detect these in outdoor environments using CCTV cameras. Outdoor environment means it constantly changes. It's raining, it's foggy, it's snowing, it's it's hell. And uh, so we had to bring this Hollywood know-how expertise. I'm sure that all of you guys saw The Last Emperor, Platoon, or great movies like this. Uh, so we turned to one of my buddies, uh, Vittorio Storaro, who's one of the most Oscarized directors of photography in the world. And he put me in the hand of one of his good friends, Paolo Ferrari, who's very known. And uh, Paolo is one of the brains that we have in our company about image processing. But without any further ado, I'd like to change a little bit and go more into the mood of what we're gonna be showing you guys tonight. Uh, right now I'm logged into our user interface uh, of our weapon detector. A weapon detector is uh, called Samson or Shimshon in Hebrew or Sanson in French. Um, it was mainly developed, yes, with the European Commission. And uh, we've tried to reinvent the wheel, really, and we did it. Uh, what we did is uh, physical security, uh, probably not 2.0, but 3.0. We connect to CCTV cameras like... That one right there, see that? That's a dome camera, it's a crappy camera, put it there. And if someone enters a camera field of view, engaged with a gun, engaged. Doesn't mean if the gun is in the holster, that's not a being engaged. If the gun is in your hands, that's being engaged. Hence, uh, what I'm gonna do now, I will simply like, let me just refresh my page like this, you guys can see the, the funky uh, uh, ball that we have right here on our, um, <clears throat> on our, um, how can I say that? On our uh, login, uh, login screen. So I'm gonna log in here as an operator, right? Uh, work for the municipality of, let's say like, uh, 
like we were in Oslo, Magnus. So um, as you can see right here, no, I don't want to save that password. We're very like uh, IT orientated. We're showing you all the process. The processing is going to happen on an edge device, which is on premises. So we've connected a, a little tiny industrial computer that turns your CCTV cameras into an uh, AI powerhouse. That's the key. We're not using any cloud for that. And um, I have some settings, uh, but I have here something very interesting. It's called an in instruction card that my boss gave me that when there's an alert, I should call a guy called Ray at this number. Okay, right. Well, we'll see in a minute why. Uh, and then, okay, I got a camera right there. Uh, and what I can do is, okay, my camera is right now being streamed right here. And uh, if I ask Christophe, you will meet Christophe in a few. Uh, if you could just walk there, we we'll see this is just refreshing uh, very slowly because it's not a VMS. Thank you, Christophe, you can come back. As you see, he's being constantly like obfuscated. And that's one of the key points here uh, at Alert. Uh, what we've been doing is that we never take your, uh, we're very keen about uh, uh, data privacy. We're GDPR compliant, right? We don't store, we don't take any biometric data. We're NATO compliant. And I'd like to be straight to the point with that, guys. NATO compliant means that we're not using uh, people that have double nationality, Chinese American, Russian American because we're dealing with uh, law enforcement agencies and the software cannot be developed in Russian or Chinese countries when you sell it in Europe for European governments. We also Department of Homeland Security compliant, that is we answer to their existing RFPs. No one in our company has double nationality, American, Chinese or American, Russian. Hey, I didn't make the law. That's what the law says. All right, so we abide to it. Um, right now, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm going to show you guys, I think you can see right now on uh, the windows right there that uh, we have uh, uh, Christophe. Christophe is uh, the marketing director here at Corail System. Uh, we're going to use him for this demo, right? Uh, Christophe, so I'm going to give him the, the gun. He can come in front of the camera. Christophe, could you come next to the screen right there? Come forward, forward. Bien avance. Can you show the gun? Uh, to the camera, you see, it's real. And what I'm going to do at the same time, right, because that's where the whole magic happens, I'm going to share, right now I'm sharing what the camera sees. Again, it's not a VMS. It's just a witness stream. Every five seconds, we get one little frame, right? And Christophe is going to go out right now. Well, uh, cash logo, no? He's going to hide the gun. If not, it's going to generate alerts, right? And tu peux aller vers la machine à café tout au fond? I ask him to go near the coffee machines all the way on the end, as you can see. And now, okay, tu peux venir et puis être le bad boy. I'm going to ask him to be a bad boy, like they had at Charlie Hebdo in 2015, right? And Christophe right now, he's just like playing with the, playing with the gun. Oops, sorry. So I there you go. You see my screen. I got a first alert in real time. I got two alerts. Merci, Christophe. Could you come back in? Let's see what happened right here with those alerts. So I have an alert right here. I can see with the JPEG. Wow, there's a, indeed a crazy guy with a gun. I'm not so sure about it. I see that indeed he's carrying a gun, but I'm obfuscating him. And only once the system is ready that this is really a gun, do I reveal his biometric data? Well, this is great. I got an instruction card now. I should call Raymond. Well, well, I'm not going to call Raymond, but I'm going to turn on right now my Telegram. As you can see, my Telegram screen is, uh, is on. And it's been like 46 seconds since the system saw that anomaly. So I'm going to say yes, that this was a, um, how do you say that this was a, a really like an alert and then I can resolve that alert. Now, what happens when you do this, if I go back to uh, our screen right there, you've seen that I see like in Telegram, I have received like a, a Telegram, uh, and the telegram is actually right here uh, <clears throat> on my phone. 
we have a bot and if I'm part of a law enforcement agency I can see that indeed there is an individual carrying a gun I'm like holy crap and here I can see the video clip of Christoph holding the gun but I get now situational awareness I can call it instant I even have the GPS coordinates so if I click on it because I'm standing at this location and I hit direction boom I am a law enforcement officer uh, I receive this on my phone I know that there's a gunman he's dangerous he has a small magazine fed handgun in my capacity I will wait that one of my um, other officers or agent will go in there together with me and I know I will not be outgunned it's very important not to be outgunned the reason is because if you are at gunned, then you get killed. That's simply what happened in Oslo, 69 people dead. That's what happened at the Tree of Life synagogue. Uh, I don't need to mention uh, Uvalde, Texas. 300 to 274 police officers trying to neutralize one guy it took them two hours. The reason is they had no instant situational awareness. They were fully outgunned. This is a second alert of uh, when Christoph was walking around, as you can see, gun and face. Uh, we're not recognizing faces. We're just detecting them uh, in order, the body part of the face to know when we should uh, remove the black obfuscation. So now I'm going to say, yes, that was an alert. And then I have to click resolve. The alert is now Sagur. We say in Hebrew, it's closed, it's done. Um, and I'm logged in right now, as you can see, as the operator. Yeah, all the guys at the distribution office now. They all got the uh, the telegram with the second alert, as you can see right here. If I pull my phone. <clears throat> yeah, I got another message right now. And this is a second alert of Christoph. So uh, let's say I'm at work right now. I've had some alerts, but I'm one of the. A guy like I say, hey, uh, just show me the false positives. And I can see that I had a bunch of false positives here. What happened? The reason is we built our artificial intelligences using synthetic data. This is one of our patents that we have. Um, and it means that this AI that you see here was just deployed two days ago, and it's still in the learning process. So about every other day, we aggregate all the false positives. If you take this false positive, for instance, right here, this is the owner of a uh, car system, one of them, uh, Yonka. You can see right here that on the top of the window, it said that there was a gun. So we feed this to our system. You see that? And we tell our system, hey, that's, that's not a gun, man. This is just like a window. So the system has this learning curve that it has to do. Uh, that's the same thing yeah that was very interesting because when you look at it this is me last night it kind of really looks like a gun but it's not a gun so that is the reason why it created this false positive so when this is installed it takes about a week 10 days two weeks to be fully like accurate the accuracies that we use uh, dome camera bullet cameras and from smart cities to indoor environments uh, I'm going to remove the telegram window. Guys, I'm sure you have a lot of questions and I'd be so happy uh, to answer them for you. I'm sorry if I talk a lot. I like to deliver the message straight to the point. So what do we got? The question. That. Yeah. Oh, no, that's um, it. Yeah, I got a couple of questions for you, if, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. yeah, really interesting. I think that's, um it's a unique and i think it's going to be a, a, obviously a growing space in the near future i mean you mentioned like the, the tragedy in uvalde and and things like that basically not having that situational awareness inside the building mm -hmm. um the couple of questions that i was thinking about when you were going through your presentation first of all sort of how do you think in a situation like that um, where people need that sort of internal situational awareness inside of a building, how how much do you think that your product or your you know this this tool will be able to help you know first responders? And the second question is, if you are a first responder, if you're on a police department, you are law enforcement, and 
you know, you do you always get messages? Are they going to a dispatch center or is it going to, you know, how, what is the process of them getting notified and, and sort of like so that they're able to respond? Did they have to go to that call first or is it sort of automatically dispatched and, and going into the control center and to the operations centers? So <clears throat> the the way it works is like every everyone's different, right? Now our product, uh, we've managed certify alerts with Securitas in Switzerland. Uh, Securitas, they use the SID C09 uh, protocol, which is the same protocol that ADT, Stanley Security, they use. You know, if you have a fire alarm at home, detect smoke, it's going to send a little text message to their SOC. Uh, we do the same thing. What we do make sure is your uh, operations uh, the way you run your SOC will have to be revised. We've done that with the uh, security and the municipality of Oslo. We've done that with the police law enforcement and the municipality in Padova, where they have 60,000 students. It's a big deal, you know? And so we've done that with the transport hub that we're working with in Switzerland uh, that keeps getting robbed, you know? Uh, and so... We encrypt our alerts and we have different options. Either we send directly from the edge device the alert directly to the SOC, but then we make sure that at the SOC, they push the alert back to the first responders, or we send the alert directly to the relevant people directly. Uh, you might ask ourselves, yeah, you know, how do you do this? You need specific communication protocols. It can get very complicated. It's true. It can get not very, extremely complicated. Our CTO Neri is the guy that had the job for Space IL to stream uh, the stitch, uh, and to stream and stitch the video stream from the Bereshit moon probe, the moon probe that was sent from Earth to moon. And he had to stream that back to Earth in real time and stitch it. Uh, he's an expert in communication protocols. And so when we deploy with a client or with an integrator, we make sure that we work with them together and not that, hey, we're pushing the alert to milestone systems like 99% of our competitors. The problem when you do that is that the operator is going to go good old analog and is going to say, hey, uh, hello, please, I have a shooting. And that's exactly what happened in Uvalde. People showing up without instant situational awareness and people dying. So we're different in that way. Um, we're different in the way that everybody in the company has a very close relationship with the product. Liron, who does our AI, was in one of the knife attacks in Ranana, uh, Israel. He saw it. He was in temple and he saw two guys starting to stab each other and he wanted this to stop. Say he, one of our guys, his guy got his dad got murdered by the mob. Uh, my former boss, world renowned banker, Mr. Edmond J. Safra, who owned the Republic National Bank, had CCTVs all over his house and he got killed in Monaco. And there was zero recording of the tapes, which is impossible, of course. So, you know, we all have that little story with people that we know that died, got killed, et cetera. So we want to make sure that when we do it, we have a few things. Hollywood approach, Swiss approach, we're very, very precise. You, you can ask a distributor. I, I drove them nuts when they do a LinkedIn post. I'm like, no, the pixels are not that accurate. Because in this matter, every second counts. So the UI has to be perfect. The way you deliver the message has to be perfect. So our customer support is perfect. If you have a problem, you can go on our website, alert.com. Yeah, we rebranded from 1702 AI to alert. You click support. Within a few minutes, our support is going to get back to you. And either there are Swiss people or French or from Tel Aviv. Uh, and there are people that care about the clients. That is what makes a difference. And to be able to relay the alerts to the relevant people, not with the conventional protocols, this is the key, because that's what we've done for the European Commission. 
We had to reinvent the wheel. How can we deliver a message to the SOC? And how can we have the SOC deliver the same exact message to law enforcement? You don't do that, you can close the shop. And that's yeah, what- Very interesting. Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned a couple of times um, Oslo and Padova. And so, yeah. you know, there, I, I guess you tested this out, did some field testing with that in, in those two locations. Um, what did you learn from that experience? Maybe a bit of background first, and then what did you, what were your key takeaways from those two field mm -hmm. tests? Northern people in Norway like to, like the Swiss, a little bit more like than the Swiss, they like to puff their chests. Uh, their mayor told us that, hey, we're the best in security in the world. We had a tsunami and we had COVID and we had an attack. And my way of saying is like, you just got two shootings that happen right now. And a lot of people died and wounded. How can we help you? How can we work together? And this is the key. What we learned with Oslo was you have to establish a relationship with the municipality. You have to establish a relationship in order to help them change their operations. And you have to be very careful about data privacy. That's what we learned. In Italy, what we learned, we push the system to the edge. Um, coming from filmmaking, I said, all right, we're gonna put different types of CCTV at Piazza dei Signori. So some 4K cameras, yeah. And then they're like, we're gonna do a live test, super. And I'm like, you know, we, we've done it in Oslo with 4K cameras. Let's take low end cameras with half the resolutions. And they're like, what are you doing? Maybe you're gonna fail. I'm like, that's pushing the technology. That's pushing the boundaries. We did detect guns, but we learned in Padova that when you place cameras outdoors, you are better off with 4K cameras, which is eight megapixels, rather than choose five megapixels camera. That's what we learned with them. Don't forget, Oslo and Padova were research projects. They were not development projects. So when you do research, you can have this, you know, you can play a bit with your pepper, salt, and water and add more and see what comes out. And we learn, okay, you do outdoor, it's 4K cameras. And the Italian, we love them. You know, we have this contest every time I got there, uh, who serves you the best tiramisu. So that's also one thing that we've learned with them. In Italy, it's a different culture. And in Italy, law enforcement, they just want their cities to be safer. And so that's quite interesting, and I'm glad you mentioned the the data privacy aspect. I'm quite sure, you know, when people see this publicly or they look at this type deployment of these types of systems in cities, they they probably have some concerns about data privacy. How yeah. do you? I, I'm sure you've had a thousand questions already about that. How do you get around some of these issues in terms of not necessarily getting around, but how do you answer these questions and sort it's of allay people's fears? Sure. Let, let's get to the bottom of it. You know, like yeah. Uh, uh, I don't like to, let's say, go, go around the bush, you know, look at our competitors, actuate AI. Uh, you need to process your streams on Amazon, you know. Okay, you want to send your data on Amazon, that's you're free to go. We don't do that. Uh, we have our own server infrastructure. Uh, we train our AIs ourselves. Uh, actuate, use Amazon Mechanical Turk. Uh, so if you have a false positive, it's going to be some random dude in Vietnam or in India that's going to be annotating your video images. And maybe those are government images. I don't want this to happen. So we have a system of auto tagging uh, our images entirely in our lab uh, in Tel Aviv. Uh, second thing is, how do we go around with data privacy, zero eyes. They raised $25 million in the US. They have so many false positives that they've admitted to on ipvm.com, which is the Zagat survey of video security. Their system is great. A fantastic marketing powerhouse 
horrible system. Why I say that? They have so many false positives, like four or 5,000 false positives a day that socks were like, just stop sending your false positives to our socks. So they had to make their own sock. Now, the DHS says, if you tell me, alert the cops in under one minute, that's when I start to save lives. When we send an alert to the SOC, it takes them just under one minute to analyze it. So when Zero Eye sends their alert to their SOC, you're about a minute. Then they bounce it to another SOC for 911. It's another minute you lost. You lost. People are dying. You know, this is not a game of $25 million. This is a game where I was sitting in a place and you see people being stabbed. And that's what motivates us to stop it. So we took in consideration this. What can we do to have extensive data privacy? The result, remove the cloud and make the best over the air AI so that you have zero false positives. In, a, in Padova, we had out of 10 million images, five false positives in about 10 seconds. 10 million images in one week. We had one guy, he had put his fingers in a super weird way. It looked like a gun. Hey, who are you going to choose? You're going to choose the sushi you can get at the Walmart? Or you're going to come have my sushi that I'm going to dip yellowtail in gold? Uh, I hope you will come to me because we work very hard on it. And that's our philosophy. So people ask us, are you going to deliver the knife detector? We've been working on it for quite some time, but the knife detector, when it's going to come out, it's going to be the equivalent, the impact of chat GPT-4. People will look at it and like, this stuff works. Why? A knife attack in Israel, someone has to reach for the knife in the pocket and go like this. A knife attack in Switzerland it's a guy, he's opening up his jacket, he goes like this with his friends. A knife attack in the UK, it's two guys on a scooter and they pull out a huge kitchen knife at the bus stop and, and they rob you. A knife attack in France, they chop off your head with an army knife. This is no longer computer vision or object detection. This is pose estimation that goes along with a nationality, a nation, a behavior. And that's what we've been working on as well. So 2023 is going to be for us a year of customer service, a year of bringing not only small magazine fed gun detection, but revolvers, assault rifles that we've had for a long time, and the knife detector. And after that, we have objects, recognition, suspicious object recognitions as well. I mean, the world is very big. Hmm. And so if a city or a municipality decided to, to you know, bring one of your systems on board, how long does it take to be able to get established? We, we had our test yesterday, two days ago, with the head of tech here, uh, Raymond from Corai System. Uh, so you just plug in the, you plug in the box, you have to add your CCTV camera URL and then let it run uh, by itself. Okay. Uh, it takes about two, a week uh, for us to receive some information from that camera, build a model, and then we notify you by email. You click update system and that's when you get your first AIs deployed. So it's as easy as reading an email uh, and being able to plug um, an RJ45 cable from your camera network uh, to our edge device. Oh, very interesting. So it's basically using all the, the existing city or municipality infrastructure and yes. camera systems that are in place. Oh, very nice. Yes. And so when you, when you go into a city like that, when you, and you sort of assess it, do you provide also like recommendations on what else they need yeah, to do? Of course. This afternoon we were on the site and uh, the site, I'm like, yeah, show us your cameras. And, you know, I come from Hollywood. And I, when I saw the camera angles, I'm like, we have some work to do. It's normal. The integrator doesn't have the eye uh, of a filmmaker. 
you know. So when we were in Oslo, when we arrived, they had like four CCTV cameras. And I'm like, guys, why you make it complicated? Just put one with a fish eye and that's it. Put an AK, you're going to see everything. Then they were telling us, so this is fantastic. We no longer use the other cameras because we got a better angle with that. So what we do is we help you. Uh, we consult with you. And of course, we have a very strict set of rules of which camera angle uh, would be more suitable uh, for what is needed in terms of weapon recognition and weapon detection. Hmm. That's very interesting. I'm, I'm actually sort of surprised by the deployment speed there. That's very nice. Um, I guess I want, my last question is really, what is the future then in terms of you know this type of AI support with cameras? What do you, where do you, what direction are we going in? Where do you think? The future, they're about to pass a law in France so that uh, the government can start to use uh, artificial intelligence uh, for uh, video security, right, Christophe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when you're going to have that in place, uh, it's, it means that uh, that the law is going to be. That's Raymond that you see on the images pulling out a gun. Uh, probably the data privacy law are going to be a little bit loose. Probably, maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. But the future entails better artificial intelligences. It also entails uh, people will know more about AI. You know, when you go into a smart city, People are afraid of AI, and it's happening today. Chat GPT. People are saying, "Hey, uh, my coder couldn't code, so I asked Chat GPT to code." So what we think is going to happen is you have to teach the people that AI is your friend. You know, AI is not your enemy. We're not building the Terminator, even though the DARPA is, but we're doing something which helps the humans. That's what it is. What's the bottom line? So the future is going to be a world where artificial intelligences will become better. That's all there is to it. And don't be dependent on it. You know, that's what I'm, that's my advice. Hmm. Well, that's very interesting. And so where can we find out some more information about what you're working on and specifically the tools like the weapons detection tools and things like that? So what you do is you go on our website, as you can see, like uh, alert. Uh, .com. It's AI-LERT.com. I think you can see it on our screen right here. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. There's also something that we're very proud because we're not just a company that does uh, stuff like uh, AI and yeah, gearhead and jarhead, whatever. No, what we are is we also publish like uh, interactive maps of shootings. Uh, for instance, if you can see my screen, if I click on shootings in France right there, uh, I can see that we have about 582 shootings that have been listed right here. And even the latest one, and of course, I don't know, like that one, yes, five, uh, five dead, nine wounded, we uh, 130 dead right here. That's the uh, November 13 attack. Um, so we provide you with fantastic tools. So even if like you could even open the maps on Google Earth, as you can see right here, Oh, there you go. I was on Geneva yesterday in Switzerland. That's my hometown. And then we're going back to um, right here, for instance, on Google Earth. I could check it out, could check out what's happening right now in Marseille. And there's definitely an area where I will never move in, which is the northern uh, hmm. volume of Marseille, because there's just like shootings all the time. So that's also what we do as a company. Uh, we provide you with insight, um, with insight uh, information, so you could essentially better assess uh, in which, what's the state of security, what's what's the trend in security. If right now we're going to go to Arizona because we have some resellers right there, uh, it, it, it's a tool that makes it super easy for them, even for their marketing. You know, if they say, hey. Uh, there you go. We had a few shootings right there. Then you can see that right here in Phoenix, there was a shooting. And uh, what's kind of shooting? Uh, at Aaron Saucedo restaurant. So as there was a shooting there, I definitely contact all the stores nearby and try to sell the try to sell them like our system. 
So if you want to know more, you can read about white paper and we're very orientated in the US towards like uh, private schools. Uh, you have our integrators right here. You have a distributor called iSystem in France and Koran is uh, even, uh, they have like their, their, their new website called Samson. I mean, a sub website, samson.coraisystem.fr. Oh, yeah. Uh, and 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 this website allows you to see what what are the news with uh, what's going on in in France uh, if you want to get uh, our system, and uh, and that's that's about it. So guys, I think I was able to answer uh, all of uh, all of your questions. Right? If if there's any other question, please do ask them. I like to be consistent. I've spoken a lot. Is there anything else I should uh, answer? Are you interested for collaboration, Taim Ben Brahim? Where are you, Taib? Which country? <clears throat> yeah, you could just post in the chat if you'd like, or you can just again post in the Q and A. Um, what's a good email address we could reach you, Joe? In case somebody has questions like that. Oh yeah, of course. Up. It's uh, Joe at alert.com or you just go on our website and there's a contact yeah. support page right here you see the the support icon you click on it and that's how you can uh, get a hold of us you know that's okay, best. perfect all right that's probably the best way is just to reach out to you directly in case anybody has any questions uh, yeah. but yeah joe thanks a lot i really do appreciate that uh, that's a very interesting tool that you developed and i think it's got a lot well more than a lot. I don't know. It's got a ton of useful applications. So I'm very interested in seeing where it goes and, and see watching your success, I should say. Thank you very much. And uh, in Europe, if you have any inquiries, you should always be able to contact our distributor called VPN. Uh, uh, Christophe is like, Joe, you're on a VPN. So <laughs> my my <laughs> My bad. But guys, thank you so much. And uh, looking forward. Oh, there you go. We got an answer. No. Uh, are you interested for a collaboration? Uh, ICT.io. Well, we'll take that email and we will see. Yeah. Where. <laughs> cool. Very cool. All right. Perfect, Great. Joe. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And uh, we will see you next time in our next webinar. And uh, thanks a lot. Have a good evening. You are very welcome. Thank you, everyone, and take care. Bye-bye.